Every person is going to experience a whole series of traumatic events in their life. And for most of us, uh, for most of those events, they happen, we do what we need to do, we allow whatever healing happens to happen, and we get on with our life. And uh, the resilience of the human spirit is really quite extraordinary. And yet, for any of us, from time to time, some traumas will happen, and for some excellent reason, not always obvious, that some part of that trauma will remain with us. And uh, rather than trying to uh, work out some overarching theory or approach to dealing with trauma, in the solution orientation we're more inclined to find out who this person is that is troubled, that has brought their uh, problem to us, who are they, and to find out what's missing for them, what part of the original trauma is still intruding in their life, limiting their experience, what aspect of their uh, previous experience, the trauma in the past, what part of that is still uh, troublesome? Uh, <clears throat> and it will vary tr tremendously from one person to another. Some people have flashbacks, some people will have uh, annoying blankness, some people will have uh, physical s symptoms, some people will have sen absence of sensations, there's a whole range, limited behavior, some person may not be able to go back to a place or deal with a, a particular looking person. There's such a variety of um, consequences to trauma that persists that right, it seems to make much more sense to find out who this person is, what's happening for them, and what they might benefit from, from their experience and in their experience, so that they can move on in their life. Now, in this particular demonstration that follows, we'll, you'll see the delightful way that a very significant trauma, very, is uh, dealt with, how learning happens, how important the likes are, to notice the mood of the conversation, and to see the way this man is able to learn what he needs to learn. So as a result of that, he can then move on in his life and move on in his experience. I'm so grateful to him for his generosity in allowing us to be part of such a personal experience, such a personal conversation. And I want to express my gratitude to him for his willingness to do that so generously so that we have an opportunity to learn together and to uh, contribute to our clients and their well-being in the future. Have this, and uh, even if it's a re repetition, you said, there may be something that, that you, some additional insight, some additional learning that you get a second time around, Good. or a third, or whatever. What have you been up to that's been uh, pleasing to you recently? Uh, what's been happening? Yeah. Lots of up and downs. Lots oh, okay. of, but the good thing is that for every down there's been an up. Oh, okay. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> At least they haven't all been downs. Okay. And it's also nice to know when you're feeling up that this too will pass. You know, it's only temporary. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you, I had to put it in the context. <laughs> it's called negative reframing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping for those good times to continue, but anyway. Yeah. Well, they, they continually return, that's for sure. Yeah. And they can only return if they leave. Um, and uh, what, do you, what sorts of things have been, uh, what's going on when things are working, you know, when things are up, when you're having a good time? Or uh, I think it's, you know, as, um, as Frank was saying earlier, with, the, um, you know, with, with selling and, um, you know, getting landing pieces of business and then, oh, yeah. but, um, 
you know, it, it is it is that roller coaster. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a good it's a good positive feeling. There's there's hope for more of that, mm. and there's a glimmer of hope that that will lead to something else, and it'll and it will all just open up. <laughs> Did you ever see that film from uh, Parenthood? It's got uh, I think so. with uh, I can't remember the name of the bloke, but there's a t- <laughs> fantastic scene where the, one of the sons. Um, gets into watching porno movies and uh, the mother discovers these and she's watching them she can't believe what she's seeing and anyhow the grandmother comes past and uh, she looks in the door and she says oh she says oh, there's something about that rema- man that reminds me of my husband <laughs> <laughs> and then she said um, uh, life's a roller coaster," she said but she said, I don't mind the roller coaster. She said, some people go on a merry-go-round. And they just go round and round, but they don't get anywhere. She said, I like the roller coaster. <laughs> Here she is, she's about 90 plus. Oh, it's... <laughs> Very wise. It's a, it's a movie that every now and again, if we have, I'm not sure what new other kids we get, we take it out. And, and Steve Martin. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He's got something in that for every aspect of parenthood. Yeah, it's fantastic. Anyhow, the things the, when things are going for you, when things are going well, it's with your business. When you yeah. get clients and things are, you can see that it's real. It's not just uh, hoping, wishing. Yeah, well, they're still at the hope stage, but I'm just done, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. climbing that roller coaster. Okay. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, what is it that we could talk about that would be useful here? Something that's happened in the past that's been troublesome to you? Yeah, it's, it's mainly my reaction to um, uh, my son's operation when he was two, oh, yeah. and and the way that um, uh, that was quite a traumatic experience. But having a two-year-old who's having open-heart surgery and oh, yeah. uh, and all those sorts of things. And I'd like to meet a father who didn't have a strong reaction to that. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I wouldn't actually. But <laughs> hmm. so it was. Um, it yeah. was. It was quite. A, he's now eleven, but he's oh, got yeah. another. Um, uh, another surgery coming up when he's um, 12 oh, we think we don't know when he's mm. when his heart gets or he grows enough sure. that the conduit has to be replaced so oh, yeah. whenever that is likely to be it's likely oh, to be okay. early time. so in some ways there's a there's a trauma coming yeah it, it's inevitable even I mean it's going to happen yeah and it's, yeah. it's a lot of it's my ability to be able to deal with that uh, effectively because yeah. I know that uh, the way that, that stress actually manifested itself last time mm-hmm. uh, in work situations and um, uh, as social situations, it was kind of like I was just a different person. The fuse was kind of like this long. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, you love your son and you you you, you care about him, and you you if something would have happened to him, then that would be awful. Yeah. And you st- if you're dealing with something like open heart surgery, it's not like ingrown toenail or something I mean that is major yeah and there is a there is a risk yeah oh, absolutely there is. there's a possibility that he will die there's a possibility that he won't come through the surgery yeah yeah I mean, it was, it was in speaking to um, uh, the surgeon mm-hmm. um, you're a classic surgeon and um, uh, he didn't have uh, his, his tolerance for adults was zero mm-hmm. love the children mm-hmm. and you, you could see um, you know, when we're in the uh, intensive care other, uh, after the surgery, mm. and the way he handled Nicholas, or placed his hand on his forehead just to, mm-hmm. you know, um, show him affection, even though he's completely out of it. Yeah. And then, so we're standing there, mum and dad, and he and he, he turns around, and he sees us, and, and just looked as if to say, you know, what do you want? Yeah, <laughs> get out of the right, you're useless. Yeah, yeah. And he was, um, uh, and prior to to the to the surgery, he's uh, we were talking about the odds of Nicholas not coming out of it. Mm-hmm. And we said, oh, it's, you know, it was three percent chance he won't come out. He said, no, it's five. And it's kind of like three or five. Yeah. I mean, in the scheme of things, does it really matter? It's got, it's kind of, there is a probability, and it's very, very low. Uh, yeah, anyway. but it's very, very real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. So the the, the um, so that was quite traumatic, and and thinking and picturing, you know, when I was taking him into uh, into the waiting area before he goes into surgery, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and and how that how that felt. Sure. And it was all one-sided. It was all the way I felt sure. and the way that Lisa felt. But now it's about how he's going to feel yeah, sure. being early teens mm. and um, you know, being, being cut right open and having that scar and 
and all the things that go along with um, being a teenager and sure. other kids looking at you and yeah, all that. Yeah, watch sort of that. Things. I, you know, yeah. what's wrong with you? So it's helping him mm-hmm. through that as well. Okay. I mean, the you know the, the surgeon said, and we said, what are the probably the risks of, of the next operation? He said, I haven't lost one yet. So he he basically says the next operation is not an issue. Okay. It was just the first one. He said to replace the conjure, it's not it's not hard. Oh, yeah. But also surgeons are a bit gung ho, aren't they? They say, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we'll just you know we'll just you know a bit of a nip and a tuck here. We'll just remove this leg and throw that arm away. There, you know, they're very kind of nonchalant about that. But mm. nevertheless, if there's open heart surgery, yeah, the, the, you and I know that there is a risk with that. Mm. If someone goes and has their tonsils out, there's a risk. Yeah, well, you, you go to a hospital full stop. There's yeah, risk. I reckon. Unless you want to, you want to keep away from those things, unless a surgeon friend of mine used to say that you need to have a holiday before you go to hospital. And I pity help anyone who goes there when they're sick. <laughs> but um, when you look back to to that time when he was two, in that first operation, and um, you look back to the way that you were, um, and you mentioned about like short fuse, like how you were with people, that, 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 that you're kind of on the edge. Yeah. Mm. When you look back on that, what what was helpful for you to, to get through that time? At that time, nothing. Mm-hmm. It, was, um, it was very much, um, after the event, you could look back and you could see it. Oh, okay. Well, now, now it is afterwards and you can look back. What do you see? Um, see, I, isolated instances of... Um, it, usually, if, if you're going to spit the dummy, you can... Most times you can see it coming and you can mm-hmm. say, you can take a step, a step back. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a, a bit of a crescendo coming up to it. Yeah. Um, this, is, this was just, you yeah. know, it hits you like a brick wall. You can't see it coming. Okay. It's just like a rage. Yeah. Okay. I'll never forget the look on that poor woman's face in Church Street when she took my parking spot. Okay. <laughs> she wound up the window. Okay. <laughs> oh well, better her than I don't know. <laughs> but um, so you 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 when you look back, you see the worst and moments of rage. Yeah. And in some ways, that 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 was perhaps expected or inevitable or. Un- unavoidable? A bit unavoidable, I think. Yes. So, I wonder how you could, in taking care of your part of the situation, what you could do to um, anticipate that uh, in this future uh, surgery situation. Mm. If you can't anticipate the rage, it may be useful for you to set up some scheduled opportunities to shorten, to lengthen the fuse, to let off some of the steam. Uh, we, we've got a punching bag in our backyard that an uh, 18 year old was hung from a tree there. So uh, if he gets upset, he goes out and smashes that. And sometimes I know he goes out and does that when he's not upset. Mm. Somehow he kind of defuses things before they have a chance to. So I'm wondering how how you could plan to have some opportunities to be rageful in situations that would be socially acceptable, not Church Street, maybe Bay Street, but not Church Street. <laughs> some places where you could legitimately be rageful and plan that. Yeah, I, I, yeah on reflection, I think it might be literally um, of what the of the absence of something, which was being able to talk to someone about that uh, about it. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, I, I think that's a, probably a good. It feels like a good strategy being able to talk about because looking back, I don't know that I. So who could, to talk, to, who, who could you talk to? Who who could you talk to? I can't see Frank. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there are some people here who you can talk to. Yeah. There are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's literally that kind of situation where you you can you can find someone. Who so, if you talked with someone or to someone, would that would that 
mean that you wouldn't feel the rage or that you wouldn't have to be rage? I think it's a short circuit because I mean I, I can oh. always expel uh, energy but it's it's literally, literally to be able to talk to someone and to, okay. um, because the conversations with you with your partner uh, are always skewed yes um, yeah because you have to be take care of her and yeah. and so on mm, can't just say what you need to say for you yeah mm. Okay, so that's that's something that's going to be helpful for you. Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because looking back, there wasn't that. Okay. And when you look back and see that that wasn't there, then, or you didn't, you didn't do that. What do you anticipate if you do that this time? What do you anticipate will be different when you look back on that? Uh, it will be. Uh, well, it'll be a lot smoother, and hopefully, we'll be able to. Uh, there won't be some brick walls to jump over. There'll just be some hurdles. So, how do you know when to start that? Do you have to wait until the surgery, or is there something to do beforehand? No, as soon as, we, as soon as we, uh, as soon as we know, or mm -hmm. we're, we're told that, um, yeah, we better we better book in. Okay. So at that point, that will that will alert you to to make arrangements to, yeah. to speak to someone. Yeah. Okay. It's it's literally not to. It's just for someone to listen, that's all I think. Yeah. There's, there's nothing more, I mean, there's nothing else that needs okay. work. It's just the ability to be able to, to talk to somebody on this. When, when you look back then on that situation mm -hmm. when he was two, uh, I mean, you, you were rageful and you, uh, you were on the edge and, uh, and whatever, and, and you did get through it. Mm. So what was the first sign that, that things were starting to settle? How did you know that you were through it? How did you know that... Okay, that's over. Yeah, what was that? When you breathe like that, is there a kind of a... Did you have a feeling of relief? No, no, it wasn't... I'm just trying to recall. I, I think it was almost uh, almost instantaneous. I mean, when he, when he was home and everything was okay, and oh, okay. He, was him, he was himself. Okay. You know, kids bounce back and they don't, they yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. care. No. It's kind of like, no. They don't look for sympathy, they just, no. they just want to be. Okay. So when he when he was back home and just be himself again, that was the yeah was like a sudden you could just let go of that yeah okay so maybe you can look forward to that this time yeah and coming home yeah and just being him mm. you can look forward to that yeah absolutely okay. and um, <clears throat> what else would be helpful to take care of you in your situation in your response to this and this upcoming surgery when you look back to the previous one. What else can you see might be helpful? You can see that talking to someone is going to be helpful. Looking forward to him coming home and just being himself is going to be helpful. Yeah. When you look back on the, the first one, what else can you learn from that that's going to be useful for this one, for you? Um, I, I guess to put in or to plan for a bit of a barrier so that um, so that the amount or the kind of work that I'm doing I can, if, if it's possible, I can wind it back a little bit. Okay. So then I can have more time to do the things that I yes. need to do. So I can fit everything into the day. Okay. There's a bit more leeway, a bit more space there, a bit more yeah. flexibility for you. Yeah. Okay. So that if I'm doing a job, I can do the job and then uh, but reduce the workload during that period of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're probably a good strategy as well. Okay. And you know how to do that? Yeah. It may even involve someone saying, can you do this work? And you're saying, actually, no, I can't. Yeah, yeah that's right. Even, you know, someone might say, oh, there's a multi-billion uh, job here. And you say, well, sorry, my son's having... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I'd just, just say, I'm sure it can wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right in, in November. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, And if you lose the multi-billion thing and you, and you, you spend the time with your son, then... Maybe okay. worth it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe worth it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, does it when you look at that, you look back to what the, the two year old operation was like, and you're looking forward to the, the next one, <clears throat> and you've talked about the things that you can do, does that seem that that's enough for you to to manage that, or is there something else that you might want? No, that's pretty good. I, I think yeah. the, the biggest thing is actually having someone to talk to. Okay. I think that's the biggest thing. That's what you said. Yeah. That's what you said. And you seem to know that very, uh, you seem very clear about that. 
Yeah. Okay. <coughs> now, in the helping your son, there was a the situation. Mm. You've known him for a little while now. He's been around for 11 years. Yeah. What sorts of things <coughs> have you found helpful to get him through difficult times or challenging times? I, I think it's... Um, he's evolving himself. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's turning into a, into a kid who's... Uh, which is nice. He's got a bit of a... A bit of an attitude and a, uh, a bit of a shit happens attitude as well, okay. which is which is which will help him. Okay. He worries about himself, mm -hmm. um, but he's he's fortunately he's already a little way there in okay. the stakes of I can look after myself or I can put this okay. in perspective. Now, maybe even drawing on what we're exploring here, what kinds of conversations might you have? Not should you. But might you even consider having with him that might help him to be even more uh, shit happens, accepting and worry less? What sorts of conversations might you be able to have with him? Just, a, a, I guess, a reflection on other people's uh, scenarios and what they go through and how they've dealt with it. Okay. I mean, the, the, the risk that you run, and it's, it's important to put in the context of what you just said, is the conversations that you might have, yeah. if it's appropriate, if sure. it will help. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, to have them all there in the toolbox in case you need to, yes. uh, is not to raise things or mm -hmm. raise his concern, which he didn't have before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you end up stirring the pot and all this, and then all of a sudden he's like, I never thought You can create a problem, yeah. yeah. Mm. So mm. It's, it's very much just, just thinking about the different scenarios and different com kinds of conversations that you can have. Okay. Uh, but literally, I think, spending the time to think about what they sound like. Okay. Um, so and listening to him? Yeah. Listening to his mood, listening to what, what well, sort of things are going to be. He 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 talks to his 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 mum a lot easier than than he talks to than he talks to me. Even though he he's they all will, will talk, but mm. it comes out easier. Sure. Uh, to to mum. It's usually the way. Yeah. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd, you know, it's, um, yeah. I guess I, I've, I've got to be cognizant of it because I'm fairly. I'm more blunt, yeah, um, and always have been. I just need to take a leap out of the out of the book of um, of Lisa and just be more take more time, I guess. Okay. And what can you do to support her? Because if she's the one that's going to be in the conversations, like if she's going to be dealing with this more by the sound of it. Yeah, probably um, spend the time to debrief and, and understand via her what he is feeling. Okay. Probably. Sounds again like more talking. Yeah. Talking with your son, talking with your wife, talking with, with Frank, talking with other people. Yeah. Sounds like there's some conversations to have here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and as much as possible, trying to take some sort of um, some sort of emotion, uh, as much emotion and energy you can, and just be pragmatic in the conversation. And, and when you take the emotion out and you're pragmatic, there's still an emotion there. Yeah. Which is peaceful acceptance. Pragmatic is in fact an emotion. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. It's not emotional, it's like, like yeah. weeping and, 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 and angering, but it's still an emotion. Mm. And you are a pragmatic person. Pragmatics is, could be your middle name, yeah? Yeah. You know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And you really just wish everyone else was like me, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, you know, if they're not, just uh, get them to wind up their window so you can get rage for it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but, um... Uh, <laughs> There's an electric window, so that's right. <laughs> Went up quickly. Um, if, if, if talking pragmatically, which is what we're doing here, you, you clear, you're clearer about what pragmatically will be helpful for you in the upcoming surgery. Yeah. And you're exploring pragmatically what's going to be helpful for your son. Yes. And for your wife. So the pragmatics is, are really at the core of this. Yeah. Yeah. And you're starting to clarify so some of the steps that you can take that will take care of you, take care of him, take care of her, mm. take care of you. Yeah. And then there's all the other members of the family as well. Yes. And um, you know, so they don't get... Um, yeah. You know, left out or yeah. 
Yeah, oh, how do you get attention? You know, you've got to have open heart surgery. Oh, I think I'm feeling a bit breathless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I think I'll start wetting the bed again. Yeah, yeah exactly. That'll get it. Yeah. And you, your daughter will probably be very helpful there. She's good at I think she will. I getting think. your attention when, you, when you're not looking, yeah? Yeah. Well, I think she's, she's a bit like that, but she's also very... Um, she's naturally giving, mm-hmm. and so I think she'll... It's the middle one who'll probably have her. If there's any issues to have, he'll, he's the one who'll have them, and the, okay. and the youngest will be. So with the middle one, what, what, what do you think might be helpful there, specifically? Uh, just making sure that he gets his fair share. How do you do that? His fair share of um, a- a- attention and... How do you do that? How do you make sure he gets his fair share? What, what'll let you know that he is or isn't getting his fair share? Well, it's going to be, it's going to be you know, relatively easier because mm-hmm. uh, Nicholas will be in hospital, I don't know, I guess for a week, I don't keep him very long now, mm-hmm. a week or, week or ten days. And uh, that's a classic time for, you know, for him to have more attention. Oh, yeah. And we will be in there visiting and all that sort of stuff, but then, yeah. you know, the rest of the time there's attention to be given to... Okay. To the other kids, by yeah. both parents. Okay. Now, what's different now than when we started to speak about this? Yeah. Um, I, I think just the the, the recognition that um, uh, that you can plan. I actually didn't even consider having a plan or any strategies in dealing with it. It was just going to happen. You needed um, some coaching. That was. One. Yes. <laughs> yes. I should have coached myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get that mirror put up. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, is to is, is to is to literally come out with some strategies and to be very cognizant of of that 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 needs to happen mm. and to plan it. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the plans are not sort of a, you know one point one point one point one yet, but uh, there's a sort of a direction there. Yeah. 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 And I'm wondering whether uh, whether it's premature to, to ask if you can start to have some sense of what it's going to be like to look back on this uh, next operation. Yeah. You know, if, if it did, if things go the way you want and here, here everything is smooth and everything's okay and you put all these uh, strategies into place, he comes home, he is himself, everything's okay. Uh, your middle uh, child has had the attention, at least she's giving, and everything, and, and everything's going on, and whatever. And you look back and you think, okay, that worked. How does that feel? Feels pretty good, and I think a lot of it will, will just be uh, how Nicholas feels, yeah, and that he's he's still the confident person that he was before the operation, or if, yeah. even more confident, yes, uh, that he, that he comes out and he's more yeah. robust and. and yeah. uh, what would you see in him that would let you know that that was happening? Uh, that he is like he is now. Okay. I mean, he has no qualms about the fact that he's got to skate down the middle of his chest now. It just doesn't yeah. worry him. Yeah. And I think other kids also don't tend to notice it. Does he read Harry Potter? No, no, he doesn't. Because Harry Potter's great for a scar, you know, that's what makes him special. Yeah. You know, Lord Voldemort, you know, nearly killed him. And he's got, he survived, but he's got the scar on his forehead. That's what makes it yeah. special. Yeah. So there's something nice about the scar. Yeah, that's right. And you can even get um, <coughs> uh, like stickers. You know, people oh, yes. <laughs> they actually put scars on their forehead, temporary yeah. scars. But anyhow, he's, he doesn't need a temporary scar. He's got his own. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's the Harry Potter of Mail Street. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I think it's yeah, if he's if he's just if he just continues to grow, I mean, as yeah. as a person, and mm. um, well, he's doing that. He's grown yeah. since the the other, and maybe even because of it, yeah, or in response to it, yeah, yeah. And I hope that continues. That pattern continues. So here's another hurdle. I just hope it adds okay. rather than subtracts. Okay. So if there was something that you could do to skew the likelihood of it adding rather than subtracting, what would that be? I don't know. Uh huh. I don't know. I don't know what that is mm-hmm. because I don't know how he's going to how he's going to respond. No. When you look back to what happened after the two-year-old thing, what were you able to do, or looking back, what could you have done, or what didn't you do that you can learn from and make sure you do more of this time? It was harder because he was my. The biggest concern is that he's uh, he'll be an adolescent. 
So it's a different ball game from a two-year-old. Well, your adolescents are different than two-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> they are different. Yeah. They are different. And so it's that whole it's that whole scenario, and I don't know what it looks like. Okay, but you do know what he looks like, and I mean, this is a difficult conversation because you know we've got all of the adolescent things yeah. plus the surgery, so there's like a yeah. one on top of the other. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a challenge. But what, what's your best guess about what would be helpful? If you could just think of something that might make some small difference towards uh, adding rather than subtracting, what sorts of things, what something that you might be able to do that might make some small difference? Yeah, nothing, I think. Doing nothing? Yeah. Okay. Because if he picks up on the fact that okay. I've got reservations or oh, concerns, yeah. it might I'm, be literally... I'm really taking care of you here kind of thing. Yeah, because I know you're going to go th- through a whole, mm. whole bunch of shit, so I'm going to look after you because it's going to be really tough and you've got okay. lots of things happening and okay. this is this is going to be a big one, buddy, so we better prepare for it mm. as opposed to... Um, uh, yeah, we've, it's, it's, it's going to be... Um, okay. You've got to have your surgery and... So uh, what's that emotion? Fine. What's that emotion? And you do that with your hands. What is that? Uh, it's... It'll be fine. I mean, there's, okay. there's, there's support here. And now that, and might, that might be exactly what it is that's... Yeah. Good. Yeah, because he'll pick up on it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll pick, pick up, up your mood. Yeah, he'll pick up the mood. He'll pick up a word. He'll... So how can you have more of that? More, it's going to be okay. Um... Well, to literally do it, I mean, and mm. and, um, and that's also you know part of the the strategy, which is coming together. It's mm. another point on the list. The okay. sorts of things that we've got to do. That's something else for you to do. Mm. It's interesting to have to put doing nothing on yeah. the list of it to do. You know, to do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's an important element here. Yeah? yeah. Very. My wife thinks I do that very well. <laughs> yes, it's me. Yes, it's, the wives have these kinds of things, don't they? Yeah. Mine does the same thing with me. <laughs> what are you doing, dear? I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot of work. Oh, you're just doing nothing again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Pottery. Yeah. Yeah, thinking or doing DVDs at the moment. <laughs> mm. Oh, just nothing, just mucking around. Okay. But you know that there is, that's important to, to you, it's important to him, it's important to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm wondering what's happening as we're talking. Does this feel like you're getting to where you want to be getting? Is this the kind of thing that's helpful to you? Yeah, it is. It is because okay. um, uh, I'm a boxy kind of person, so I like putting things in okay. boxes. So right. <laughs> so you've got, you've got the, the boxes properly boxed? Yes, they're boxed, they're labelled. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Under strategy. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anything more that we should speak about? And, um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to have another box called something else? No, that's pretty good. Yeah? That box is full. Okay. <laughs> if I go and fill up another one, I'll be in strife. Okay. Well, I trust that you know when enough's enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, shall we stop there? Yep, absolutely. Well, thanks for the conversation. I, uh, yeah. If you allow me to say it, I'm uh, touched by your um, uh, kind of... Uh, sort of very masculine blend of tenderness and uh, wanting and caring for yourself. Thanks. It's touching and uh, uh, it's not easy sometimes for us blokes to, to, uh, you know, even sensitive new age guys, you know, to to have that tenderness which you obviously do have. Yeah. And uh, it is a challenge and it is important and you're willing to do what you need to do with the strategies to make things happen. Yeah, to get them to work. Yeah, excellent. He didn't ask me. He didn't ask me. Yeah. Is it okay to use this uh, uh, conversation for teaching purposes? Yeah, that'd be, yeah that'd be fine. <laughs> Thanks for coaching me about that. We needed to have that label on the box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks. <laughs>